Last week we focused on just finding the second derivative, just, just calculate it. And also, what's the second derivative supposed to tell you? And we said that first derivative is about gradient, like we're talking about geometry and shape. First derivative is about gradient, second derivative is about concavity. So we introduced this idea that you know, rather than going up or going down, increasing or decreasing, or neither, stationary, concavity is about thinking about the curvature in which way it's facing you. Okay? So for example, this, here's an increasing function, here's an increasing function, here's another increasing function. Okay? But when you think about these three, good morning. When you think about each of these three, even though they're all increasing, they're all increasing in different ways. Okay? For instance, this guy here, he's increasing at a constant rate, straight line. Yeah? This one's increasing and it's getting faster. This one's increasing and it's getting slower. Right? So in terms of concavity, we would say this guy is concave up, this guy is concave down. What's the concavity of that guy? We haven't thought too much about this, but you can logic it out. How would you describe its concavity? Flat. Does it not have one? Well, yeah, you see, when I said, oh, think about it, it's curvature, and which way it curves. Well, um, this guy doesn't have any curvature, right? Like, I can't say, oh, yes, the cup is face up, or it's face down. There's, there is no cup, right? Now, there's, um, there's, by the way, there's a more formal way that you can um, determine that. This is a straight line, right? So, for example, it might have an equation like y equals m. B. Okay. Now we can work out fairly easily what the first and second derivative of this line is going to be. What's the first derivative? Yeah. It's yeah. the gradient, oh, right? And then when you go ahead and you work out the second derivative, remembering that m is just a constant, like that's what makes it a straight line, right? What's the second derivative of this guy going to be? Zero. Zero. So all of that to say, you've got. Good morning. Concave up means the second derivative is positive. Okay. Concave down means the second derivative is negative, but this is neither positive nor negative, right? It doesn't really have a concavity, okay? So you can have these different classes of, of increasing functions. You can have the same thing for decreasing. Uh, and that's what we focus on as the, like, that's what it means. That's what the second derivative actually looks like and what it tells you. Now we're going to focus on using the second derivative as a tool to work out other things about the features of our graph. Okay? So we're going to focus on two main areas. Um, the first one is one that you already know about, which is stationary points. Okay? So we're going to talk about stationary points. You can see, if we have a look at this question, it maps it out really easily for us. Read it with me. If f of x equals this, this function, find f dash, find f double dash, hence find any stationary points, and by examining the sign of the second derivative, determine their nature. Remember there was that phrase before, um, find stationary points, so you solve for the first derivative being zero, and then determine their nature. How did we determine the nature of a stationary point before? Yeah, we used that table of values. You look on the left, you look on the right, we talked about how to pick those values, and then you see what kind of shape you're getting, or, or this, or you get the idea. Okay. Now that we have the second derivative, we have a more powerful tool, or a more efficient tool for, you, for finding and determining these natures. So let's go ahead and do this, right? For starters, we're going to need the first derivative. And you can just read off the first derivative from this graph, right? From this equation. It's going to be 3x, 3x squared, three. take away 3. Fantastic, okay? Now, at this point I say, because they said find any stationary points, where are stationary points? It's where the first derivative is 0, okay? So I'm going to say, Stationary points exist when f dash x equals zero. Okay, I'm just going to again remind you these these little connecting sentences are critically important. Critically important. Um, they convey that you know what's going on, and they make sure that you don't just have a series of equations that are strung together for no apparent reason. Okay, so this is what I'm solving for. So I say, you know, what that actually is is three x squared minus three equals zero. You can go ahead and you can solve this for you. What would you do? Take out a factor of 3. In fact, because I've got 0 on the right-hand side, I'll just divide through. That's all fine. And so from here, I have two solutions. Like, you don't even need to factorize this, do you? What are my two solutions? Plus and minus 1. OK, so there are my x values. I haven't found the stationary points yet. I only need some y values that would go with those. So I'm going to come back up here, right? And I'm going to say, well, I have language for this. I can say f of 1, that's going to be my y coordinate, right, will be 1 cubed minus 3, which is minus, minus 2. Okay. Okay. And then f of negative 1, which is my other stationary point, 
um, is going to be, that'll be minus 1 plus 3, two. right, which is 2. Okay, which shouldn't be that surprising because even if you didn't spot it before, what kind of symmetry does this function have? Even. It's an odd, odd function. Odd. You can easily, like, it's all, they're all, all the powers are odd because this is an easy way to say it. Okay, good. So, what do I do now? I have found where the stationary points are. I haven't set it yet because I'm going to tie it all up in a nice bow. But I've got a stationary point at 1, minus 2, and a stationary point at minus 1, 2. Question? Oh, okay, good. So, well, what am I going to do next? Okay, good. So, um, I want to determine the nature of these stationary points by using the secondary root. Now, just remember why this works, okay? This is the picture that we're getting. This is the picture we're getting. Concave up, concave down, okay? If I have a local maximum, then what is the concavity going to be for that point, the actual maximum? It's going to be concave down, right? So if I find that the second derivative is negative, I will conclude that's a maximum. And of course, in reverse, if I have a minimum, then at that exact point, it should be concave up. Okay? So if I have a positive second derivative, I will conclude it's a minimum. Okay? So in order to do any of that, I need to know what the second derivative is. I'm going to come over here. F double dash is equal to, can you read it off for me? 6x, that's just it, isn't it? Because that negative 3 doesn't figure into the second root of Okay, so now that I know what f double dash is everywhere, I want to know what it is at these particular points, right? So I'm going to say f double dash uh, of 1, right? Uh, well, if the function is just 6x, so it's 6. Okay, now just mark this carefully. Watch the way I'm going to set this out, okay? What I'm interested in is the sign of this guy, right? Good morning. Uh, the sign of this, right, I've established by getting a number. The number is important, just like it was when we were doing the table of values, okay? It's 6. I can say, therefore, f double dash of 1 is greater than 0. I've made a statement about its sign, right? Now, this is about the sign of the second derivative. Now I'm going to interpret that geometrically. I'm going to say, i.e., second derivative positive, so it's concave up. It's okay i.e. concave up. That phrase is important. I'm showing that I know geometrically what the secondary root algebraically is saying. Yes? Um, when you say concave up, mm. isn't that a maximum? So which of these is concave up? <coughs> so it's which way the cup is facing, right? So this is concave up. Yeah, but that's a maximum point. Minimum. It's a minimum because it's concave up, and in a second I'll draw it to convince but you. Isn't it mine? Oh, it's mine. Wait, it's I'm one testing. Six. I'm testing f double dash of one. Yeah, so okay. one and six, right? No, six. Yeah, so one, one is the x coordinate, right? That's what I'm putting in, and six is what I've got as the second derivative, right? So that's my coordinate there, right? But my second derivative is this. Okay. Oh. Stay with me. Stay with me. I'm not finished yet. It's okay. Let's see, let's see how we go as we progress through it, okay? It's concave up, which means therefore, now I'm going to draw a conclusion, okay? And I'm gonna to bring together all the things that I've said. One is the x-coordinate, negative two is the y-coordinate. So I'll say one comma negative two is a, now I'll classify it, right? It's concave up, that looks like a minimum to me, right? So I'm gonna say it's a minimum turning point. Yeah, that's what I was getting okay. confused about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, and, and by the way, this is part of the importance of why I actually say this, right? Lots of students will um, try to ignore that. Like, they're, they're trying to save time, basically. And they will do this. If you do that, uh, you have kind of like a 50-50 chance of the particular question and the particular marker not really caring. It's like, oh, okay, I get what you're talking about, okay? However, that means you have a 50-50 chance of it mattering in the question, right? Or the marker saying, no, no, that's a particular point of differentiation between the students that I'm marking. So that's why I'm going to say um, it's really important to actually state that because there's a connection from here to here, right? It's not that the sign of the second derivative tells you what kind of turning point it is. It's that concavity tells you what the turning point is. And there's like a, there's like a step process between them. 
Okay, so I've done it once. I'm just going to do it a second time for the other turning point that I've found. So I'm going to go f dash, sorry, double dash of negative 1 because I already have my second derivative there. It's negative 6. Therefore, the second derivative at that point is negative, i.e. it's concave down. Okay. Okay, so now I'll tie it up in a neat bow by bringing together the coordinates of the point with what I've determined about its nature. Um, minus 1, comma 2 is a maximum. Okay, so any questions on that? Does that make sense? Um, again, I think that this is the, the critical spot in here. And you can see I've got f and f dash and f double dash all flying around, which is why it's important to have sentences connecting everything so you see what's going on. Okay. All right. Now, this is how we use the second root for determining the nature of stationary point.